and hello the internet and hello to my subscriber you're looking exceptionally well today and I'm back on the road and I'm heading north to a place called Mule Idris oh, I've forgotten what it's called now but it's near a place called v I'm hopeless at names Volubilis 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 anyway there's a big Roman ruins a whole an old Roman town there uh, lots of Ro Roman ruins so I'm um, um, heading to a place called Mule which is nearby and I'm going to stay there for two maybe three nights as uh, hopefully tomorrow or the day after I'm going to go and look at some Roman ruins so I left the campsite this morning and um, I'm just heading to Rabat because I've got some exceptionally sad news in that my blow-up mattress has died. The MT500 I bought in Spain, I've finally worn it out. There is no sleep left in my mattress, so I need to get a new one. So uh, the night before, I woke up through the night and I had to blow it up again. I thought, uh-oh. So... Uh, so yesterday I had a look at my mattress and I tried to listen for a leak, couldn't find it. Went to bed last night, then again I woke up about 2 o'clock, had to blow it up again. Woke up about 5 o'clock again, had to, had to blow it up. So that's it. So it's gone in the bin. So I'm heading to Rabat first. I'm going to buy a new mattress, hopefully. Um, I'm going to buy a new cushion as well because the cushion I've got, it's a bit, it's a bit monkey, it's a bit dirty. Um, I don't even think a tramp would use it, to be honest, so I'm going to get a new cushion as well. Uh, and that's it. And then um, once I've been to Rabat and got me bits and pieces, I'm going to head east. Well, it's slightly northeast, really. And it's not far. Probably about a two, two-hour ride, something like that. And um, I'll go to Mule Idris. So I'm going to have some A-roads at first. Once I get out of Rabat... Then it'll be all rural roads, so going through the countryside. So here I am, um, on my way to Rabat. Then after that, I'm heading north, and the bike has been fine. When I left the campsite this morning, there's a big roundabout nearby, and as soon as I started going round, oh, the back end went. I thought, oh, no, here we go. What's wrong now? So I kept going, and then, because once you get into the... Into the Sort of the towns of Morocco, they do like the roundabouts. Nothing wrong with roundabouts, I like roundabouts. Uh, but the next roundabout, I was going around it again, the back end drifted out, and I thought, what's wrong here? So a little bit further down, I stopped, had a look at my nozzle. Well, no, I could see straight away what was wrong. The side of my tyre was covered in oil. So I looked at the nozzle, which puts oil on my chain, and somehow it's moved. And instead of putting oil onto the chain, it was putting oil onto the back wheel. So that's why I was slipping. Well, actually, I had a, as soon as I went around that roundabout, the back end, and I straightened up straight away. And I, it was a bit of a heart-stopping moment, to be honest, um, because the traffic here does not give way. And it's not survival of the fittest, it's survival of the fastest. And so, uh, anyway, that was the issue. Right, I'm heading north. And then I'm heading east. So I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.
and hello the internet and all my followers and hello to my subscriber the hair looks a little better today anyway i'm here i made it um i've got all the way to mule idris and the journey today was about 140 to 145 miles it was really easy um went to rabat first and again i had to i went in the first it's strange in, in morocco every major city has a decathlon um i know you get them in the uk and in europe but i didn't realize you could get there were so many um in morocco and uh so yeah popped into the first um decathlon had a look and i thought there's a bigger one down the road so i went right into the center of everybody went to the big one and that's where i got a new blow-up mattress and a new pillow so next time i go camping i'll be okay and the old blow-up bed and the old pillow i put into the nearest bin put into the nearest bin so but uh I, i've had my money's worth i mean i, I got that when I first came on this trip, I had a, an expensive blow-up bed. I think it cost me 60, 70 pounds, something like that. And on the third night I used it, it kept going down. So I called into a decathlon in Spain, bought the new one, the MT500. And I must admit, the MT500 has really done me well. And for four months now, I've been using it for four months continuously. It's not like I just use it every couple of weekends or just for a few days in summer. I've been using it continuously and it's really took a battering um and i think I, it was me because in my i've got a little like toilet kit with my soap and things like that and also in there i've got a needle and cotton now yesterday i was doing something and i had my took my kit out and at one point i snagged my finger and i think when i put it on the needle was sticking out and i think it's put a small um small hole anyway but um, it's nothing, nothing worse than waking up at two o'clock in the morning and finding your mattress has lost all its air. So, um, so that's sorted now. So after left for a bat, after a while, the roads become rural and the scenery just transforms. And I suppose the scenery here is quite similar to rural Spain and rural Italy as well, um, because I as I started coming eastwards everything's green trees fields massive fields just green fields and it's beautiful absolutely beautiful and i know that as you go further down morocco to the south of morocco it's more arid and it's a struggle to grow things because it's more deserty uh, but when you come to northern morocco you just don't appreciate appreciate how green it is you just always assume morocco is arid and full of mountains and desert but it's not northern morocco is is really green it's lush it's trees and fields everywhere although i do know that they're struggling for water at the moment and um anyway the reason i've booked into a hotel and i've arrived at the casper senadji and i found it on booking.com and i'm here for three nights and it cost me what did it cost me now i think it cost me it was 41 41 pounds 41 pounds and the reason why i'm here is tomorrow there's going to be a whole day of rain in fact it's going to start tonight about two o'clock in the morning and it's going to go to continue all the way through to sunday afternoon sunday evening so we've more or less got two days of rain and tomorrow there's going to be some heavy rain now the main bit of my tent is okay, no problem at all. But the ground sheet has took a, a real battering. Um, I've got two holes in the ground sheet. And I think before long, one, if I was to stick out in the rain, I think before long, I'd have to call for a lifeboat um, because the water would get in no problem at all. But um, so I thought, well, let's have a look around on booking.com and I found this place. Now, it's maybe on maybe the day after tomorrow or the next day as soon as i get some dry weather i'm going to head for head to um volubilis volubilis that's the name volubilis and it's a huge roman town 
that has been excavated um, and it's about 10 kilometers from here so that's on my list of things to do um, as soon as I get a dry spell but I know that tomorrow and most of the next day is going to be wet so and that's why I've come to a hotel because there's just no way I'd survive if I stayed in the tent maybe if it would have been the start of my trip uh, of my trip but not now because the ground shoot on my tent is just shot is shot to hell it's um anyway so let's give you a walk around let's let's show you where I am and this is the patio area and if we had sunshine tomorrow it would be a nice place to sit but the town is very high it's one of these towns that uh, is built on the side of hills so that's my view and as you can see it's already starting to get quite murky out there quite dull it's starting to mist over and there was a really strong wind today it's very warm it was 25 it's been 25 degrees all day which has been lovely but it's a really strong wind but i was looking to the sky it's starting to cloud over now but i know that the rain's going to start about two in the morning so i'm going to be safe i'm going to be snug i'm going to be warm and this is my bed this is going to be my bed for the night because there's no point in me sleeping in that one so that's going to be my bed and i've got this lovely little room there i've even got a shower and let's have a look at the front just have a look through the window oh we can't do that we can't do that but uh yeah it's beautiful isn't it beautiful and it's lovely i love i love this it's really all the dark wood and we've got this beautiful veranda so it's beautiful isn't it absolutely beautiful i feel so at home here it's lovely it's so comfortable and I feel so at ease, it's great. And it's a great price, even if it would have been more expensive, I would have been quite happy to pay because it's beautiful. But um, the landlady asked me if I wanted some food, and I said no because I'd already eaten. Uh, although I'm going to go for a wander in a little while, um, maybe just get something, a little snack to eat or something. But uh, I'm going to have breakfast tomorrow, I'm going to have the evening meal as well. And. Um, it really is not i would love to stay here for a few more days but i can't because i've only got six days left in morocco i have to leave in six days so three days are here and then once i leave here i'm going to look at my roman town my roman ruins then i'm going to head for chef chowan spend two days there then once i've done that i can head to tangier and then catch my ferry over to spain and the journey continues but the last few days has been great. Um, the campsite was really good. And from there, went to Rabat. And Rabat, I didn't know what to expect from Rabat. I just thought it's going to be one of these places which is just a city. And in many, many ways, it is just a city. But there's some really nice places to see. And there was a lovely old quarter, an old fort there, and some gardens. And I was really quite surprised. But also, there was the... Um, the mausoleum for king mohammed v it's just beautiful i just cannot find the words to describe the beauty of this mausoleum and it was built in my in the mid 1960s and it took them about 10 years to build it and it's on the site of an old mosque and the tower still exists and that that mosque dates back is probably about nearly a thousand years old or oh, the tower is nearly a thousand years old um, but all the old um, walls of, of the mosque are there but that's where they built the mausoleum and it was absolutely stunningly beautiful and I just can't find the words to describe it and um, but that was Rabat I was really impressed and if I'm ever this way again I'm going to spend more time in Rabat because it, it was nice had a real nice feel to it as well um, where Marrakesh was good it was full of excitement and noise and everything where Rabat was just nice and chilled it was it was lovely I went to Fez as well and what a beautiful place Fez is and in Fez you've got the new city and then you've got the Jewish city and you've got the Muslim city so it's three cities in one and the new city is a little bit like Agadir, big wide boulevards, big modern buildings, lots of palm trees and still got the, 
the Moroccan feel. But the Jewish city has got its own individual style. Um, and even though the Jews don't live there anymore, the architecture remains and the, and, and the style and, and the feel for it remains as well. And what a big palace. And the king has got a big palace there, which was huge. These massive gates with this beautiful, intricate tiling all around the gate doorways. Beautiful. And then you've got the old Muslim city, which is surrounded by the old fortifications. And there's a vantage point there you could look down, and it was beautiful, a beautiful sight. And I went down then to the old city, um, to the leather works. So where the leather has been made in the same place for 900 years. 900 years have been doing the same thing. And the leather is beautiful. Once you've seen the, the, from above, there's like a, a balcony above, and they've explained how it all works and the process, because uh, it takes weeks and weeks. It takes months to, to process the leather. They took you into a shop and you could buy all sorts. I mean, there was a whole area for handbags, a whole area for purses and shoes. And there was another big room there for jackets. And I fell in love with a jacket. Now, there's three types of, of leather um, commonly used. Um, there is cow leather. Then there is camel leather, which apparently is, is really, really tough and resilient and, and really good. Um, and then there's goat leather. And I thought goat leather, and, and, and they showed me someone. It's really soft and some, uh, uh, and supple. And then I looked at the jackets, and I saw a jacket I fell in love with. I was looking for a motorbike jacket, and I was looking at them, and, and then oh, I'll try it on, try it on, sir. <laughs> and that's where you've got to be careful, because as soon as you say try, try, try it on, try it on, you, you, that's when you start falling in love with something, isn't it? So I tried it on, and it fitted like a glove, and it was so supple. Oh, and I fell in love, and it was—it would have been great on the motorbike, and it was 2,100 dirhams, which is about 180 quid, and I was this close, this close, and I thought, I've got enough stuff to take back with me, because I've already bought, I've bought two little, I've thought, one panel is almost full of things that I've bought to take back with me, um, and I thought, I can't buy anything else, and I thought, the next time I come to Morocco, I'm going to buy that jacket. But it's made out of goat's leather, and it was absolutely beautiful. So that was Fez. Fez is beautiful, absolutely stunning. And that is another place I'm going to visit when I come back to Morocco. So that was it. So from there, uh, saw Rabat, saw Fez, made tracks today, went to Decathlon, got my new, got my new bed. Oh, you, you, you've got to laugh. When I was packing up this morning, there was a guy and the next bit to me uh, with a tent and a bicycle. So... I was just before I was packing the bike, I was having a last, last cup of tea, and we started talking. And he'd flown down to the Congo with his bicycle and all his kit, and he was cycling back from the Congo, back to Germany. And he was 72. Wow, 72. Now, part of the reason for these videos is because I want to encourage you lot, all the couch potatoes out there, to get off your backsides, get your panniers packed and go out and, and travel and see more places. I'm 65. If I can do it, you can do it. But this guy, 72 years old, and he cycles from the Congo. Wow. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. But, um, but that was it. But we were talking, and he says, you snore quite loud last night. I said, oh, I'm sorry. He says, if I was staying longer, I would be moving my tent today. When I go into a deep sleep, I do snore quite loudly, as my family will play testament. But uh, <laughs> but that was that. So anyway, so I said my goodbyes this morning. Um, next to me, there was a couple from uh, from Swansea. That was Di and Karen. Um, did loads of chatting yesterday. Had something to eat as well. Put the world to rights. So goodbye to them. Uh, we had a real, we had a good chat last night, and also to Jen. Now Jen, I met Jen back in Marrakesh, um, and I met her again when I came up here. And um, we did a few little day trips together, going out, getting the taxis, and jumped a few trains. And it was great because sometimes when you're on your own, it gets a bit travelling on your own. Sometimes if you're jumping on a bus or a train, it can be a bit lonely. But when you've got someone else and you can talk to. Uh, it just makes the journey easier, doesn't it? So, um, but yeah, we had a few cups of tea together, and we've um, 
solved all the world's problems many times over and a bit of a laugh and a giggle so i said goodbye to her to uh, this morning oh she's got a fantastic camper van i would be sit there i would be sitting there in the doorway eating my drunk cup of tea and just looking at her camper van and she did it all herself and it was superb i felt so jealous and i thought i could go for this i could really go for this a real big um nice comfy bed in the in the, in the corner and she'd really finish it sometimes when you see the conversions you look a little okay not quite perfect but her camper van was perfect she's really finished it off i think it took her about a year to do so um anyway said so goodbye to her and i got on the road and uh and that was it but it was a really easy journey today it was about 25 26 degrees it was nice and where we are now we're in the hills, but we're not as high. I mean, going back into the mountains further down, it really was high, so um, you could feel the temperature drop in the night time. It was terribly cold. But we're only about maybe four, five, six hundred feet, so it's just like rolling hills. The air is very soft here, and it's quite warm, um, which I'm quite happy to be around. Uh, also, that other campsite I was at, because it was right next to the coast, it would get a little bit chilly in the evenings because the the breeze and the, the mist would come in. Every morning you'd wake up and all the tent would be wet through because of the, the, the overnight mist. But here, the air is soft, it's warm, there's a little breeze, and uh, it's very pleasant. So, that's me. I've, I've, I've rattled on long enough. I'm here. I'm going to have a good night's sleep tonight. I'm going to go around the market first. Um... Might buy some fruit, buy something to drink, and then I'm going to come back, put my feet up, and have a really good sleep on a proper bed. So, from my little Bijou hotel, it's honestly, it really is nice, this place. So, um, if you ever want to come here, it's the um, Casper Senhadji. Casper Senhadji, and it's in Moulay Idris. And it really is beautiful. And the landlady is an absolute treasure. And she'll cook for you. She'll cook whatever you want as well. <sighs> I think I found home. I think I found home. But I've only got six days left. So there we go. Anyway, I'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching. And thank you for subscribing. And goodbye to my subscriber. I'll catch up with you again soon. Bye-bye then.